What's up guys, Body Tikes here, bringing you another mechanic breakdown today. I want to show you guys about input buffering, which basically to break it down in a way that you guys can understand it is, if you ever cast an ability outside of your champion's ability range, your champion will actually move up to the target you selected and then cast that ability. This mechanic is called input buffering because you can actually cue the ability to happen but it doesn't actually happen unless conditions are met. For example, someone coming into your ability range when you're casting like a Vayne Condemn or a Jace Q. And this can be very useful for basically reducing the cast time and making your champion automatically cast his or her ability as soon as someone with like a gap closer comes into your range. So this actually has a lot of practical effects when you're facing like a Nidalee, like a Shen, and Another thing to note is that input buffering is very micro intensive. Basically, instead of kiting, you're going to cancel your input command. So I'm going to click on Irelia and then cancel after inputting the command as I'm demonstrating here. A good way to practice is with normal cast on so you can actually see your champion moving outside of their ability range. But yeah, if you can imagine in a late game scenario with a lot of attack speed, having to cancel your input command and keep it buffered is going to get very micro intensive. We're gonna look over some examples and see what it looks like in a pro game. So let's get into it. All right guys, so we're first gonna look at Vayne input buffering her condemn on Nidalee jump and we're gonna throw it into slow-mo in just a second. Pay attention to the mouse movements. I am casting my Condemn on Nidalee while she's out of my range and then canceling it with another animation. Even though I'm canceling it here, as soon as Nidalee enters my range, Condemn immediately casts and it cancels Nidalee's jump. And here we have a short clip of what Condemn looks like just on reactions without input buffering or queuing up the ability. Now we're going to be taking a look at Alistar's and Jace's interaction when we input buffer. We're also going to take a look at it in slow motion. As you can see when input buffering, Alistar will very rarely land the pulverize and just get knocked back after hitting the headbutt. We're also going to be taking a look at what it looks like when you don't input buffer and try to knock back a skilled Alistar player based on only your reaction time. And to finish it off, we're gonna look at the Alistar and Lee Sin interaction. This first one we're gonna slow-mo is input buffering and look at the mouse movements. I am queuing up the Alistar headbutt. So as soon as Lee Sin enters my range with his queue, I instantly headbutt him. When I don't input buffer, it takes me until after Lee Sin has finished his queue to headbutt him. And this is just a fun clip of what a double input buffer looks like if both you and your opponent are using this technique. It's kind of like a draw. So I hope that you guys learned a lot from this video and that you guys can use this mechanic to better improve your reaction times and casting and getting all of those pesky gap closers away from you. So thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Body Tags. If you're new around here, make sure to subscribe or leave a comment. And I'll catch you all in the next video. So determined, so deserving, fulfill one on the goal when my soul is burning. I ain't scared, it'd be great without no fear. If you want to live forever, here's your chance right here. The game is on, and all the fans are gone. Do you do it for the love or just for show? Becoming one with the passion, no fear for the dough. I'm addicted to a dream flow, cause it makes me move.